Have you ever wondered about the extent of medical examinations conducted on aspiring correctional officers? It's a question that's been brought to light in recent years with an unsettling controversy brewing in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. The heart of this issue lies in the invasive and often unnecessary medical exams, particularly rectal exams, that were imposed on young men and women eager to serve as correctional officers. This practice, which allegedly spanned a decade from 2006 to 2016, has sparked outrage and legal action. Around 190 current and former officers have courageously stepped forward, filing a lawsuit against the department, claiming these exams constituted sexual assault. These individuals, some barely in their 20s at the time of the examinations, argue that these procedures were not only humiliating and intrusive, but also entirely uncalled for. Now let's delve deeper into this concerning matter. The year was 2006, a time when these invasive examinations began. In the heart of Sacramento, nestled among the bustling clinics, a story was unfolding. A tale that would soon grip the state of California and shake the very foundations of the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. It was in these clinics that aspiring correctional officers, eager to serve, were subjected to a series of medical examinations. These were not just routine health checks, but rather a series of intrusive and unlawful procedures. The target group of these examinations were young, mostly in their early 20s, full of ambition and readiness to embrace their new roles. But they were met with a deterring and disturbing requirement, rectal exams. Now, it's important to note that the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation only mandated such procedures for recruits aged 50 or older. A policy clearly outlined in their hiring bulletin, yet blatantly disregarded. These young recruits, some fresh out of college, others seeking a career change, were told they needed these exams to begin their training. Without question, without hesitation, they complied, putting their trust in the medical personnel and the department that was to be their future employer. The rectal exams, as described by the victims, were far from a standard procedure. They were deeply invasive, often painful, and conducted without proper explanation or justification. The recruits were told it was a check for their prostates, a statement that only added to the confusion, especially for the female recruits who were subjected to the same exam. As we know, women do not have prostates, it is at this point that we start to see the true nature of these examinations. An abuse of power, a gross violation of trust, and a clear case of institutional overreach. The young officers, who had signed up to uphold the law and maintain order, found themselves subjected to an act that was far from lawful. However, rectal exams were not the only invasive procedures conducted. In addition to rectal exams, the invasive procedures took a more disturbing turn. As if the rectal exams weren't intrusive enough, some women were subjected to even more invasive procedures. They were asked to endure vaginal penetration under the guise of a medical examination. The clinics in Sacramento where these exams were conducted had a more sinister requirement for these aspiring correctional officers. Women were told to squat for vaginal examinations. This was not a part of the standard medical evaluations for peace officer candidates. Instead, it was an unnecessary addition, a gross violation of their privacy and their bodies, and it didn't stop there. Some of these women and men were forced to strip for tattoo searches. Imagine the humiliation and the violation they must have felt, being stripped bare for an unnecessary examination, all under the promise of a job opportunity. The victims' experiences and feelings were largely the same. They felt violated, confused and powerless. A woman, who was just 22 when she underwent the exam in 2014, shared her horrifying experience. She was told it was a prostate exam, a medical procedure that is irrelevant to women, as they don't have prostates. The confusion and discomfort she felt during the exam were overwhelming. All she wanted was to escape from the situation. Even those who voiced their objections were met with firm resistance. A male recruit, a former military man who had never needed a rectal exam during his service, protested the procedure. He was told, in no uncertain terms, that this was what the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation wanted. 
These invasive procedures were not just physically violating, but also emotionally traumatizing. They were conducted under duress, with the victims feeling they had no choice but to comply if they wanted to secure their jobs. Clearly, these were not mere medical examinations. They were a gross misuse of power, a violation of trust, and a blatant disregard for the dignity and rights of these aspiring correctional officers. In 2016, the disturbing truth behind these examinations surfaced. The young aspiring correctional officers who had surrendered their rights for a chance at a promising career came forward with their stories. They revealed the invasive and unnecessary medical procedures they had been subjected to, sparking a wave of outrage and disbelief. Around 190 brave men and women, both current and former correctional officers, filed a lawsuit against the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. They alleged that these examinations, which had been performed over a decade from 2006 to 2016, were far from routine. Instead, they were an unnecessary invasion of their privacy and a gross misuse of power, amounting to sexual assault. The Corrections Department, in its defence, stated that it required visual inspections of the genital area but not rectal exams unless the recruits were 50 or older. This was outlined in the hiring bulletin for the position, yet the officers, some as young as their early 20s, were subjected to these exams. They were represented by Jamie Wright, an attorney from J. Wright Law Group in Los Angeles, and Brian Harrison from Harrison Christopher, based in Pasadena. The Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation spokesman Jeffrey Callison chose to remain silent on the pending litigation. He did, however, confirm that rectal exams were performed on all peace officer candidates until 2014. After this, they were limited to candidates aged 50 and older. By November 2019, the exams were conducted based only on medical factors. The medical evaluations were part of a larger process, including drug tests, vision, blood pressure and other vital checks before the recruits began their training at the Correctional Officer Academy in Galt. However, the rectal exams stood out for their invasive and uncomfortable nature. The recruits were told to undress, put on an open-backed gown and bend over, or lie down for the exam. The exam involved the painful insertion of two fingers, a procedure explained away as a prostate check. Despite the changes, the damage had been done. The aftermath of this unsettling discovery continues to resonate. The victims, brave men and women who aspire to serve as correctional officers, continue to grapple with the trauma of these invasive and unnecessary exams. The impact is more than physical discomfort. It is an emotional and psychological toll that raises questions about trust and dignity. Meanwhile, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation has been thrust into the spotlight faced with accusations and a pending lawsuit. This incident has sparked a wider conversation about the medical protocols for correctional officers and peace officers across the nation. Interestingly, there are no medical guidelines suggesting that a rectal exam is helpful in determining someone's fitness, even for individuals over the age of 50. This fact further underscores the unfounded and inappropriate nature of these exams. In the end, it's a stark reminder of the importance of ethical practices in all professions, even those as demanding as correctional officers.